Lord God, we thank you for this day. We are really aware of your power came down on earth, on each one of us. We ignite the fire in our hearts. Yes, Lord God, with your power, strengthen us and give us discernment that we may live life worthy of being your children, worthy of your son's sacrifice. Yes, Lord God, anointing fall on each one of us. May the meditation upon our hearts, our minds, our ears, the words of our mouth, be pleasing to you always. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. There is a story about a farmer in Bulgaria, and he claimed that he has a special God. This God can distinguish, discern who is a good person or not and can tell by looking at a picture and who this picture is, person is a pleasant, good character or bad character, unpleasant person. And so he used this God to distinguish the boys that his daughter, four daughters, gonna go out and date. And he would uh, put the picture of the boy in front of the God. And God eats them. That means he is what? Good person, good, pleasant character. And the God had but picture. That means no, no. So none of his daughters went out with the um, boy or man when the God indicates putting heads. So apparently it worked out and all his uh, daughters, four of his daughters, have uh, a great relationship with, uh, with their boyfriends, even married to a man, and it proved to be this God really has right discernment, distinguish who is good and who is bad, what is good, what is evil. Don't you wish to have a, that kind of uh, pet in your life, right? It's life gonna be easier if you can tell right away. You can discern what is right, which way to go. And by the way, we all wish to have a such spiritual gift. That is a gift of wisdom, we call it, discernment, that what to do, when to do, what not to do, good and evil, this distinguishing power. But God says, wish no more, because our Bible says what? If you want something, what do you need to do? Ask. Ask. And then what? Seek. Seek. Yeah, ask, you shall receive. And seek, you will find. And knock, and the door will be open. So what does it mean, though? When you, God says ask, we know praying, right? Asking God. What is uh, seeking? What does that insinuating? Seeking. Huh? Study in the word of God. Seeking the truth. Seeking the way of life. By studying the word of God, we can, it's a, Indicating seek, all right? And then what is the knock? You knock on the opportunities to what? To serve God, to serve God. God has given you all sorts of uh, spiritual gifts, and 
ASK. So you know ASK is ask, right? But it, it stands for ask and seek and not. So today I'm going to uh, say ASK, that means those three things you've got to do. And ask is ask, but ASK. Got it? So God says ASK, and on the, um, today's Bible verse, seven, verses 7 through 11, I believe, right? 7 through 11, is it 11 or 12? 11. 7 through 11, and he said this. Did you know that it's the same passage, same words in the book of Luke? Book of Luke, it has chapter 11, open it. Chapter 11, verses 9 through 13, it says the same thing except the, the, uh, the one line, except the one verse. Okay. Matthew says this. You then evil know what to give your kids a good gift, how much more the Father in heaven will give you the good gifts, those who ask, right? So you wonder what does he mean by these good gifts? And then when you go to Luke, it says what? Those who ask the Holy Spirit. That's the good gifts that God is uh, willing to. And whenever we ask that gifts, God's going to pour out on us. Not only asking, but seeking, but knocking, ASK. When we do ASK, God's going to do it. Now, you all know we are in the um, Bible series called the Sermon on the Mount, right? And then lesson 11, lesson 11, day of Pentecost, it came up. Their title is what? Detecting the lies of what? The world, in the world, and in us. And how do we do that? Without the spiritual power, without the spiritual gift of a discernment. Detecting something bad or good, right thing or bad thing, wrong thing, we have to have what? Discernment, right? And that's what the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit, gives us wisdom and understanding that no one can have. And that is what Jesus is talking about this morning. And through all these uh, Bible passages, we are going to look into how do we detect the lies in the world and in us by two Bs. How is that? By two Bs, we are going to look into this passage. Now, first of all, this is right after last lesson, judge not, right? Condemn not. And now, Jesus says what? Verse 15, just take a look at it. Watch out what? False prophets. Who are those false prophets? And Jesus is uh, saying, judge, judge not, judge the sin of the false prophets. Now, who is the, who are the false prophets? Like a TV evangelist? Or Saddam Hussein? What, who is he talking about? New Age Movement, he is talking about, right next to the uh, verse, he says what? Those false prophets, those what? Who come into the sheep pen in the sheep clothing. So that means among us, we are the sheep of Jesus, right? And among us, there is a false prophet. She, uh, wolves in the, what? Sheep's clothing. And who are you calling anyone wolves in the sheep's clothing, right? 
And Jesus did not, once again, did not say condemn the those who are in the sheep's clothing. Just watch out so that you don't follow those who practice wrong things, evil things. And those things that bring the destruction in your life and the body of Christ, those people, when we, all of us, been challenged sometimes, and God wants us to recognize who is, what is, wolves and sheep's clothing. Now, how do we recognize that? How do we discern? Look at the Bible. Jesus says what? By what? Fruit they bear. Bad tree cannot bear good fruits, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruits. And the, by the fruits, you can tell who are wolves in the sheep's clothing. So what are the fruits that he's talking about here? Huh? The, the, the fruit of the Spirit, right? Fruit of the Spirit that we've got to recognize. Now, you know, John one time gave me this ugly looking <laughs> fruit. And what is this? He says, it's a fruit. And he cut it for me. And how do I eat? And scoop it out and eat it. And I never seen that fruit entire my life. And I couldn't recognize that's edible or delicious. What was that? Salsa. Oh, Cheromoya. Cheromoya. And I, I, I can't even remember the name of it. So if I don't know what the fruit of the Spirit look like or taste like, how can I tell, how can I distinguish what it's like? How can I discern by the people who are bad apples, so to speak, right? So we've got to what? Bear the spiritual fruit that is what? Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness. Go ahead. Goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. We've got to bear that. How do you bear fruit of the Spirit? By singing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place. Anointing for me. Is that it? Yes. yes. And somebody got to say no. Yes and no. If it is our deep down desires, entire my heart, my mind, my soul want to be empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm seeking and knocking and I'm asking, that's when it will be done, right? Uh-huh. So there is a, we, we can do asking, seeking very well, but knocking, we are kind of sort of hit and miss. Did you know that? Knocking is what? The first Peter chapter 4 verse 10 says, all of you are empowered by the Spirit. You all have given gift of a spiritual gifts, and you are all gifted to do what? Your gift, your talent, whatever you have is for God's glory, and it's for common usage. That's why on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down on everybody, right? There were 120 people. Everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit, not just the one Peter. Peter exploded, but everybody. Why? 
Everybody got to use their spiritual gift to bring glory to God. Right? And you are gifted. Say to your neighbor, I am gifted. And somebody going to say, who, me? Right? When I ask uh, Leslie, Leslie, is, uh, Leslie, do you want to join in our praise team and uh, uh, learn to play um, keyboard? And his answer was what? Japanese men don't sing, not alone playing in a musical instrument. Now look at him. He's gifted, right? He can sing beautiful with a beautiful voice, and he can play. That's the gift that God has given each one of us, and we've got to use it for further God's kingdom. That's why we pray God. Tell me what I can do for you. Now, why is that important? Why is that has to do with bearing the spiritual fruit? Anybody, everybody, who ever served one another, we serve God. We don't mind serving God, but we do mind serving you, serving me. We do mind. And when we serve, what do we encounter? All sorts of headaches and heartaches and dilemmas and trials and tribulations. And how many times, any of you can testify this, how many of times you have to bite your tongue? How many of times you have to be patient? It's not natural. How many times you have to let go, let God? How many times? Be patient. How many times? And because of that, you will bear the fruit of the Spirit. So if you have given the gift of uh, the, the, if you never used, you never worked, serve for the Lord, probably you're going to have a hard time bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Because ASK, we've got to do ASK. Pray and study and serve. That's why we are here, aren't we? We pray and study and serve one another. Amen? Amen. That's how you can uh, bear fruit of the Spirit. When you bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, then you'll be able to what? discern who, what is or are the Bad apples, wolves in the sheep's clothing. I don't like that word at all. <laughs> Let's say that's bad apples. Don't follow out bad apples when you are solid, grounded in the power of the Holy Spirit because you have such a strong spiritual discernment. Amen? So what would be first the B? We've got to ASK, what? To bear, ask Holy Spirit anointing fall on me so that I can bear the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. It's, don't forget you have to serve. That's the fast way, fastest way to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? And then second one, second one I don't like. <laughs> Verse 21 through 23. This is just the, the heartbreaking thing. All your life, all your life you did everything in the name of Jesus. You heal the people, you serve the Lord, you, uh, you, you give uh, your uh, uh, heart and money. In the name of Jesus. And then on that day, Jesus is going to say what? I do not know you. Depart from me. Even you, evil what? Evil door. You're wicked and evil door. Why? People will say, Jesus, deny, perform a miracle, heal the people in your name. What on earth you are saying, depart from me? I'm expecting, well done, my good and faithful servants. 
Where is those? What on earth? All those people who have done, served the Lord, and in the end, on the final day, on the judgment day, you're going to hear, depart from me. Oh boy, this scares me. This scares me like crazy. So we've got to make sure we don't hear that. We will not do what God has asked us. The Bible says what? Who is a true disciple? Huh? Who's going to hear, well done? Come on in. I have prepared a party for you. I will praise you. I will lift you up in heaven. Who's going to hear that? In the word of God, it says what? Who does what? Will of God. Who does will of God? Now, let me give you an example. God said to me, hey, Kimberly, cook some meal, spaghetti, something for my people. I said, yes, Lord, I will do that. Now, I don't like to cook, first of all. So I will have all kinds of excuses to delay cooking. So I said, if I want to cook, my kitchen has to be clean. So I start cleaning the kitchen and washing the dishes. And then I want to prepare the table before I cook. So I look for the uh, nice table cover. And it was in a dump, dump what, 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 what do you call it? Huh? Dump. A clothes hamper. Thank you, Gail. Clothes hamper. So I decided to wash all the clothes and then iron the table. And then, and then somebody, one of you called me and crying over my shoulder, I have to go rescue you. So I went down to rescue you because after all, that's God's will, right? And then on the way back home, I stopped by Super Red, buy some chili chicken and and then here, God, I prepared. Did I do the will of God? Hmm? Did I obey what God told me to do? No, I did it my way. I did it my way. Anything, everything we do in the name of Jesus, if my heart is not right in place and I do my way instead of God's way, Nothing going to be stored up in heaven. You know, Jesus could have lived 120 years on earth or longer. Right? I mean, he did a great ministry. He's a great preacher. He could have saved a lot of people. And he could have uh, performed all sorts of miracles. Heal the sick, change water to wine. Wine is going to love Jesus. Stay with us, right? Comfort those who mourn. What on earth? Jesus voluntarily went to cross, knowing the sufferings, rejections that he's going to feel. What on earth did he do that? Because that was what? God's will. God's will is to save entire humanity, sacrificing his only begotten son. That's the only way. And Jesus could grumble. Jesus could um, deny or dilly dally like I did. But he went on, died on a cross because God's will become his will. When we ASK, God's will for our lives will be becoming my will. Did you get it? When obedient, you know, the um, second Corinthians 7, 15 something, somewhere in the Bible says this. 
God's more affection, pour out more affection to you when you are obedient to his will and his call. God loves us, but he will show more affection to you when you do, when you obey his will. And we have a role model. We know what to do. And this is the hardest journey that we take. And there was a guy who was born with a facial deformity. And uh, he looked ugly. And he was alone and lonely. As growing up, he decided when he reached adulthood, he decided to move to a neighbor town. There was nobody would know him and recognize him. But on the way to a new town, he spotted this beautiful mask. And uh, he put it on his uh, face. It wasn't fitting right. At first, it was very uncomfortable, but he kept on wearing that mask and afraid that people gonna find out how ugly he looked if he takes mask off. And so in Newtown, he made lots of friends and he even had a girlfriend and on the day that he was going to um, ask her to marry him, and all the families and friends and gathered around, and uh, somehow the wicked uh, lady from old town, his old hometown, was related to one of this family, and she showed up at that event, and she spoke up how ugly this guy look, and she insists that he takes off his mask in front of his girlfriend, in front of everybody there. He was trembling, and slowly he took off his mask. Guess what? His deformity conformed to this beautiful mask. He no longer ugly person. He's a brand new looking handsome man. That is an analogy of Christianity. It, it is uh, from the book Happy Hypocrites. Happy Hypocrites. We ourselves are not all reached yet but keep on wearing the mask of Jesus Christ, then we will someday be conformed to that mask. Amen? Amen? And we got, we've got to ASK, right? As pray and study and serve to become more like Jesus. That's a true obedience, true Christian journey, and that God has provided for us. If or when we are conformed to the mask of Jesus, it's no longer we are hypocrites. We are the little Christ. We are the Christians who imitate Jesus Christ in our lives. And that's when we can discern right and wrong. We can discern what is deceiving in our hearts. Every time we'll ask, am I doing this for my glory, for my fame and fortune, or for the glory of God? What is my motive doing this? Why my heart is uncomfortable? Why my heart is aching? Sour, hurt. Why is it? We've got to ask. 
Amen? So what would be the last, I mean the second uh, B is what? We've got to ask huh, to ask Holy Spirit anointing fall on us so that we can become what? More like Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, without spiritual power, without discernment, we are going to follow the wrong crowd. We are going into open wide gate. The gate is wide open. That means we follow the desires of a flesh. We follow the wrong crowd. But when we have a discernment, when we are grounded in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are going to choose what? Narrow gate. Desires of what? The Spirit. Because we are soaked in wet with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And how do we discern which way to go, who to follow? The Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. That's the only one we're going to follow. Amen? Amen? So how do we detect the lies in the world or in us? We've got to ASK, ask what? Oh, see, you didn't say it quick enough. <laughs> We've got to ask to bear the fruit of the Spirit by what? Serving one another and then what? Becoming more like Jesus Christ by what? Surrendering my will to God's will. We never say, I did it my way. Amen? And we be able to say, I did it God's way. That's when God's going to bless our socks off. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Descend upon us. You are always with us. The problem is that oftentimes we ignore you. Oftentimes we close our hearts, our minds. Oftentimes we take an umbrella and block your blessing. Oh God, whenever we gather your name, in your name, you are here with us. May we gather in your name. May we connect to 